Welcome back everybody, I've got an itchy nose, that hay fever be kicking in. Because I'm now still not going to get an itchy nose, you've to, it means you're going to have a row. But I'm solo quarantining, so unless I'm round with the cats. <laughs> so welcome back to my channel everybody. So this week I was in the garden because the weather has been absolutely glorious. If you had to said to me back in January that all this will be happening and you would have nice weather, I would not have believed you. So the power washer was back out and I gave my Ikea Bistro set. I'm not going to pronounce the name because we know I can't pronounce Ikea furniture. Everyone I think has this Bistro set. I think it's like the cheapest little Bistro set. And I picked this up I think two years ago. Never took it in. Um, never folded it up and put it away. I have to say the wood on this is really good quality because within half an hour this was looking brand new. I'm gonna get straight into the video. Here's what I got up to in the garden this week. Here is my IKEA Bistro set. I can't remember the name but it's quite an iconic one. It's like their entry level budget bistro set and this has weathered lots of storms. Many a bird has pooped on it too. I never took mine inside or folded it up and put it into the shed so for the past kind of like three years, um, two years possibly, it has just been sitting outside. So the first thing I did was give it a good power wash. Yes, I have my power washing wellies on. I'm secretly a little bit addicted to power washing and I think I have successfully power washed everything but there is something so satisfying about just lifting off dirt so quickly. I power washed both tables and the four chairs and I allowed them to dry. Thankfully the day I did this it was nice and warm so these dried in the sunshine quickly. Here you can see the difference that the power of the power washing has done and also Blondie, she has her sun cream on, don't you worry, but she does love following me around the garden. The wood from this set is actually quite good. There wasn't much damage to the wood even though it had been outside and took quite a bashing. While I had the power washer out, I decided to tackle the spider shed of doom. I power washed the shed, I power washed an old chair that I had as well that probably would have went to the recycle centre but I was actually able to salvage it. So while I was waiting for my bistro set to dry in the sunshine, I thought I would clean some other areas in the garden. To give my chair a new lease of life, I found a tin of paint in the press. I am starting to run low on paint and I'm trying to just use what I have instead of kind of ordering online. So I gave this, I actually only needed one coat to get a really good coverage. This is the Authentico Versant Matte range. It, I used the colour Vert Olive and I gave it one coat. It dried quite quickly as well in the sunshine and I also used this paint to paint my potting table as well. Now we are back to my Ikea table to smooth off any of the rough edges from my weather beaten table I gave it a light sanding with my sander. As I'm limited in my supplies at the moment, I wanted to do a whitewash effect on my wood. So I simply watered down some outdoor white paint and I'm just using a cloth that is damp 
with the mixture so half water half paint in a little tin and I'm literally wiping it so how you would apply like a wood stain I'm just applying it to the wood and then I let this dry I don't have any outdoor varnish at the moment I'm gonna have to wait until the hardware shops are open back up but you can give this a seal with some clear yacht varnish as well just to protect it and get longer because outdoor furniture does kind of degrade quicker obviously than indoor so I have a basket of just some kind of scraps and some fabric that I didn't tidy away and I want to make a table runner for the table now I have this piece of fabric which is lovely and thick so it'll be perfect for outdoors and that might look nice as a table runner. And I look like I have enough of a strip to do it in length. Um, I do love the floral, but, hmm, decisions. <laughs> As this one as well. I do like that. And I do have a cushion that matches that. Oh, it's hard to tell. As you can see, I settled for the pink fabric because it was just the perfect strip for the length of these two tables and it's a nice way to join the two tables together. I was just roughly measuring to see how I wanted this to sit on my table. So I just pinned how I wanted it and then I took it inside and I cut it properly. But just to give me a rough guide to see if I had enough fabric, I just laid it out. Bloody, can, can I have my fabric? <laughs> Bloody please. Oh. <laughs> Don't sew a cat. So I trimmed off the excess uneven bits of fabric and little tip, if your fabric kind of doesn't have like a pattern or lines or anything, I followed the grain of the fabric to get a straight cut or a straight edge. So now I'm going to hem it and simply you iron it over once, which you can see here. This is lovely thick fabric so it's, it's keeping it in place. And then you simply fold it again to the width and I just use my fingertip as a guide. Um, so if it's a fingertip all the way along, I'm generally in line and then I'm going to hem the sides first and then I'll hem the end bit and I'm simply just doing, folding it over, ironing, I'll pop some pins in along the way and once it's all in place I'll take it to the machine and I'll just do straight stitch all the way around and this is going to be a top stitch so you want to keep it as neat as you can so just take your time and also don't worry if it's not perfect because well practice is better than perfection so that's it and that is how you kind of just make a simple table runner you're basically just hemming the fabric and then i'll style it up on the table and I have done the exact same with the bottom so I folded up, up, gave it an iron. This little corner might be a bit thick just because the fabric um, is a bit thick so maybe start your stitch here and reverse back and then use the hand wheel on, on your machine if this is a bit bulky and then stitch and then I have this end done, that end and now we get to give it a good iron and see what it looks like on the table. So I'm going to style up my area and I have some rugs. 
that I use in the garden. Ignore the hot press of doom, although I have kept it tidy enough. So I have these rugs that you've probably seen me use in other videos from last year. And I think this little pink rug will be nice underneath my bistro set. So I'm gonna style it up. around on this kind of corner because I did kind of tidy it up a bit first of all I power washed the pets I found these I bought these last year I originally wanted them for over there but I didn't level the ground so they actually fit perfect here now I have run out of tiles but when IKEA opens back up I will extend the tiles probably to the gate um, then we have, of course, Balondie in her cubby house. <laughs> and I painted all this last year and the paint is still good. I actually just gave it a little power wash as well. Um, my Ikea bench I moved over here. And now, obviously this looks out of place because it needs a paint job. While the weather is absolutely beautiful, the one saving grace in all of this. I found a paint pot um, of some olive green, I think it's called, is it vert olive? And I'm going to paint the potting table and that chair. Um, I haven't been kind of ordering paints because I'm trying not to buy stuff while we're in lockdown because A, I'm trying to save money and B, my postman, when I seen him, the last was looking really frazzled, so I'm not buying much. I'm trying to use up what I have. I'm seeing it as a challenge to create with what I have. So I have a tin of paint that I forgot about, and I'm gonna use that to paint the thing. Uh, it's an Authentico percent matte, same paint that I used on the pink um, Blondie's Cubby House and the IKEA table so it's nice and durable used it on the um the chair in the front that i chopped into a potting bed um plant there i can talk so i think that will make that corner look nice so i hope it gives you some ideas that if you're like me and your back garden is just grass and you don't have a budget to be doing big patios and things like that it's a nice way to make the most from your space and um, so just use the walls throw down a rug bistro set style it with things you already have and it kind of makes it yeah just just your own and a nice little space and whenever <laughs> restrictions are lifted um i may have to separate my tables so they're more socially distanced but one day i'll get to have a tea party with not just me blondie and pepsi <laughs>
bloody happy loving being in the garden this week. I have to say the garden has become like an extra room. And I've loved kind of tackling all the jobs that I would never be able to do, like painting the walls and things like that. Like I'd never have the time normally to kind of do all of them things. So it's been my little oasis, my bubble of calm in this mad world. Let me know what you have been getting up to in your garden, whether you have, like I've obviously got small kind of garden spaces, so whether in the front I have my little laneway, um, I'll link to some videos that you might enjoy, um, the one where I chopped the table into some shelves for a herb garden, and the other video where I made a little plant tiered table, I never know what to call that. <laughs> I'll pop some cards here to them videos if you want to check them out and you want some more, I suppose, small space garden ideas. So do let me know in the comments what you've been getting up to in the garden this week, if you have made anything, anything that you think I might like. That's it for this week everybody, cheeky thumbs up, you know the drill, cheeky thumbs up and I'll see you all in the next video, bye.